Now, uh, just like I promised you, I'm going to talk a little bit about this level translator. Let's say we have two devices which will communicate using I2C protocol. And one of these devices runs at 5 volts, the other one runs at 3.3 volts, or a different voltage than this one. And we have our I2C lines data in the clock. Uh, we're going to name this STA 5 volts, and this one here STA 3 volts. And we're doing the same for the clock lines. Now this protocol works by identifying level changes on these lines. Uh, for instance, every transaction between a master and a slave on the I2C bus begins with a start condition, which looks like this. We have our clock on high level. and we're doing a transition on the SDA line from high to low. That's how a start condition looks like. So the question is, how do we detect a low level on these lines? And we're gonna start by pulling up this uh, data lines to five volts using pull-up resistors. And we're gonna do the same thing on the three volt data lines. And then we're gonna use a MOSFET for each one of these lines. Uh, in this case, N-type MOSFETs. Both gates will be on 3.3 volts, so they're basically always on, uh, which means whenever one of these trains is going to be pulled down by our master device, uh, we're also going to have zero volts or a low level on the source, right? And uh, when the device goes from low to high on one of these lines, the voltage is going to go back through these pull-up resistors to 5 volts on this side and 3.3 volts on this other side. So that's how it's done. Uh, two MOSFETs, four pull-up resistors, that's all we need for this level translation, which works both ways, by the way. And I mentioned I'm going to use a radio module. The one I'm using here is called AR1010. Uh, it's basically very similar to the TEA5767. Uh, it's very easy to use. Everything is done by sending commands on the I2C protocol. Uh, it has a lot of nice functions. I'm gonna link to the data sheet of this chip and uh, it makes an interesting reading. You should definitely give it a look. On page five of this document, uh, we're gonna see the footprint of the module with its pin description. The audio output pins are on pin three and pin four and that's where we're gonna place our amplifier. We're gonna mix those channels, at least for this version of the PCB. So we're gonna have left and right mixed together, amplified, and then we go into the speakers. Uh, the RTC chip I'm using is the DS1307. Uh, it needs a 32.768 kHz external crystal. Uh, it's a decent RTC chip, but uh, there are some better alternatives if you want to improve the precision. Uh, for the second version of this project, I used a much better RTC chip, the DS3231. It's much, much better, you're gonna see. I'm working on a solution to use this chip uh, directly on this version. Uh, I'm gonna make a small breakout board because the DS3231 is in SMD package. For the temperature sensors, I use two DS1820 digital temperature sensors. The one here is in TO92 package and I'm gonna solder it on board. And for the external measurements, I bought uh, this waterproof version. Let's move to the LCD. It's a standard 20 characters with four lines. It has a HD44780 controller. I'm sure everyone knows this. What not many people know, or let's just say if you're a beginner, you may be surprised that you can also use this kind of displays as a graphical display and not only for text or standard characters. Um, these displays have a WPROM, which can be used to define your own custom characters, which you can then use in your firmware. Uh, that's how I created the seven segment display look. And I'm gonna get into details and explain how to do this. Uh, I even wrote another software uh, which helps me to create my own custom characters. And I'm gonna show you how to use that. All right, we're gonna jump into the schematic. I'm sure it's gonna be easier to understand how everything works now after you've seen the block schematic. 
starting in this corner we have our power supply I used the good old 7805 which is a linear voltage regulator to get the 5 volts rail for the 3.3 volts I use an LM317 chip uh, we have a diode here for polarity protection the microcontroller it's an AVR like I said uh, mega 328p it's clocked externally it runs at 16 megahertz make sure you get good capacitors here this 22 picofarad we have a pull-up resistor on the reset pin VCC AVCC both on the 5 volts rail um, there's an ISP connector which is helpful you can uh, flash the firmware directly on board and to do this you can use any programmer you may have uh, personally I use the original Atmel's ISP MK2 programmer or uh, this one which is my own design let's move on this side now um, here's the radio module and the level translator for the I2C here's where I'm mixing the audio signals and then this signal is going to the audio amplifier which is a TDA7052A uh, it has a volume control pin uh, what else we have the piezo buzzer and the LED uh, the real-time clock and you can see its backup battery here uh, the sensors for the temperature uh, here's the displays header this trimmer here is used to adjust the brightness and for the backlight of the display I dedicated one IO pin of the microcontroller and I'm using pulse width modulation to dim the backlight and uh, then we have these last two pin headers one for the UART and one for the buttons uh, there are six different buttons with different functions so that's the schematic um, again this is the first version for the through hole components this is what I'm gonna solder next the SMD version is gonna have a few minor changes uh, mostly on the power supply segment but for now we're just gonna concentrate on this version here here's the PCB is a double copper layer 100 millimeter by 50 millimeter uh, everything is through hole except for the radio module which is SMD uh, don't worry if you never soldered SMD before uh, it's not very difficult I'm gonna show you how it's done in a moment uh, other than that this board is a great opportunity to learn how to solder uh, that's the reason for making these boards like this for using through hole components it's uh, something that anyone can solder all the parts are pretty common uh, there's nothing exotic or difficult to find and uh, just like I promised the Gerber files and the bill of materials are also available just follow the links in the description